When earth is shaken with her final earthquake, and earth yielded up her burdens, and man said, What aileth her? That day she will relate her chronicles. Because thy Lord inspireth her, that day mankind will issue forth in scattered groups to be shown their deeds. And whoso doth good and atoms wait will see it then. And whoso doth ill and atoms wait will see it then. Okay. So let's inshallah start um, Surah Zaza. I think we covered verse 1 to 5. And we will just cover the last three. And then we will do a summary. So let's jump to verse 6. Um, if there are any questions on verse 1 to 5, uh, we'll take it after the uh, program. So on verse 6, um, Latala is um, saying in uh, the command that when the great event happens, will happen, what is actually going to happen that day? Why the judgment day will happen? So on that day, people will go forth in varying states so they, that they be shown their deeds. So every person will have a different state depending on their deeds. But whatever you have done is being recorded, either good or bad, and everything will be shown to you. So the word ashtatan means in a separate or solitary manner. So what's the meaning of that? That every person singularly um, will be given their deeds in a book. In other words, on the Day of Judgment, people will emerge from their graves without having their family with them. None of their tribesmen or supporters will be present with them. So this is the second thing that will happen. All of us alone will be going there and deeds will be given to us. Our families, our children, our father, our mother, our wives, they will not accompany us. We'll be all alone, every single one of us. Also, they will be without the pomp and show and the worldly riches they had amassed. So you see in this world, when you see those people, and I'm not talking our category, that if the president or other great personalities come onto the road, they come with a huge um, army of people in front of them, behind them, they're supporting them, they're chanting them, there are people who are clapping for them, they have their families with them, all this support will not be there when each one of them or one of us will be uh, present in that day. Even the deities they have associated with God will not be present to help. So it will be strange for those people who always used to think there's a, another being, another God who's helping them in their activities they will be shocked and amazed that day that they are not present. And everyone will stand alone to reckon with the results of his own deeds. So this is a, uh, an, um, a faith, an iman of all of us, an akhara, 
that when we believe in Akra, this is what we believe in. And this Surah Zalzal is just stating it more clearly. So all of us, when we reach at this verse, we should ponder, pause, ponder in our lives what will happen. So let's go to the next verse, verse 7. What really are the deeds? What kind of deeds uh, Allah is talking about? So there are only two kinds of deeds that Allah is talking about here, which are stated very clearly on this verse 7 and verse 8. For my yamal miskala zaratim khairan yara, and the next verse, for my yamal miskala zaratim sharran yara. The only difference is one is khair and one is shar. So khair is the good one and shar is the bad one. So whoever does an atom's weight of good shall see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil shall see it. This is the meaning of verse 7 and verse 8. So let's dug deep into this verse 7. What's the meaning of that? Is that not an atom's weight of good or evil done by a person will have been left unrecorded in his conduct book and he will see it in any case. Now why is Allah telling us now when we are living in this world? Think about it. He's giving us an advantage. What is going to happen that day? Prepare for it now. If you have this thinking, this belief now that every part that you're doing in this world is being recorded. And in other verses, Allah has also told us, what is, how is it being recorded? So we have two uh, angels sitting on our sides, they are recording the deeds. We have our hands who will talk either for us or against us. In another verse, Allah has said that the Quran will also talk against us or for us. And some of our deeds like uh, Salah, like so, Ramadan, if we did it clearly with sincerity, they will talk for us or against us. They will plead to Allah and they will come in front of Allah when we are in trouble. Hopefully we are not. And they will come and they will plead our case. So imagine that there is a court that took place. We are, the, we are brought a single person in front of the court and the judge before he says something, the cases are being brought against us. So there's a book given to all of us. And then it's also told that the book is given on your right hand, you should be, it's a success, it's happy. And if you're criminal in front of Allah, the book will be given on your left hand at the back, from the back. That by itself tells you there's something wrong. So all this warning Allah is telling us now which is an advantage for all of us to be cautious in our life. So here what Allah is saying that even an atom's weight of good you should say, see it and an atom's weight of evil you should say, see it. What's the meaning of that? Meaning is nothing is hidden from Allah's eyes. Nothing. Not even an atom. And not only that, the thinking, the niya, the sincerity, the intention that is on your heart when you're doing that deed, it's also recorded and it's not hidden from Allah. And there's a benefit for the Muslims, for the believers, is that if they think an evil in their mind and they don't do it, they get a reward for that. And if they do it, they get only it's only written for that deed that they performed. And if they did a good deed, depending on the intensity of that deed, Allah will give it from 10 to unlimited rewards for that good deed. So see how merciful Allah is for us. And revealing the Quran to us is also a big mercy. But before the big event, Zazal, the earthquake, will happen, he's telling us what to be cautious in our life. So here, 
again, if you go further deep, it says in the second point, but if seeing is taken to imply seeing its reward and punishment, it will be wrong to take it in the meaning that in the hereafter, every person will be rewarded for his most minor offense, and no one will be left unrewarded for a good and unpunished for an evil. For in her, on the first place, it would mean that each evil act or good act will be punished or rewarded, and each good act rewarded separately. So every deed that we do will be treated separate. Secondly, it also means that no believer, however righteous and virtuous, will remain safe from being punished for most ordinary error. And no disbeliever, however wicked and, uh, he is, will be left unrewarded. So there's a justice, a perfect justice, will be done by the judge, Allah. So, depending on our deeds that they will save us, it's not true. It's really Allah's mercy that will save us. But what's the point in bringing this verse 7 and 8 in front of our eyes is that our life should be a life of caution, a life of responsibility. A life should not be irresponsible we should always be worrying what's going to happen if we perform this act or deed. So in the last verse, again, these are the details which relate to the last part of the previous verse. No doubt, every person will see both his evil and good deeds, but this will be according to the principle mentioned elsewhere in the Quran. Now, what, what's the principle? A believer may not see some of his evil deeds, because some of the good ones will have compensated for them. So let's take an example. Um, talking bad about others. We are being warned not to talk bad about others, bad things about others, backbiting. Why? Because it's a hateful act in front of Allah. And what will happen in Akra in, those, in this case? the good deeds of that person will be transferred to the person whose deeds are being talked about. And if you have, if you do not have good deeds, the bad deeds from that person will be transferred to you. That's why we have to take these things very, very important, very seriously. So a believer may not see some of his evil deeds because some of the good ones will have compensated for them. Similarly, a disbeliever will not find all his good deeds in his record because some of his misdeeds and beliefs will have rendered them null and void, leading him from their reward. So after being adjusted, according to this principle, people will attain eternal salvation or will be doomed forever on the basis of the following Quranic verse. Hence, whose scales are heavy will dwell in bliss, and whose scales are light, the abyss of hell will be his abode. So there will be a scaling of the deeds. And what is the deed that is most heavy on the scale? Does anybody know? Salam. Anybody else? What is the deed that is most heavy? on the scale. There's a worse, or there's a dual. Anybody know? Think about it in Chaba, we'll let you know, we'll tell you. There's a dua when you make, when you perform and you say it, it is considered the most heaviest on that day on the scale. And it's a dua which is um, talking about Allah and His attributes. So we'll let you know what it is. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know the whole one? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa la huwa akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa billahi alayhi You're close, but actually it is Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah wa azim. If all of us memorize this dua, it is the most heaviest on the scale on that day. 
So much so that if you put that in one scale, it could outweigh other bad deeds. We should be in the habit. Yeah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Azim. Um, uh, Brother Sagir, you want to yeah, say? Allah, Allah be exalted. The Lord be exalted. Be <coughs> exalted, be the most high. The Azim, be exalted, be the most high, the most powerful. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Azim. So, so this is a verse that uh, these say is will be the most heaviest on, on that day on the scale. So let's conclude this surah, inshallah. Surah Zilzal. So Zilzalaha means to shake violently over and over again with great intensity. Don't regard this as one of the earth's earthquake because it will be of no comparison implies the earthquake which, which the second stage of resurrection will begin when all the former and latter generations of mankind will rise back to life. And in this surah, the reality that a day will definitely come when every deed done by man be brought to light is depicted. All his efforts will be exposed and nothing will remain hidden. Whatever good or evil he had done, even where, where no one could have seen him, will be placed in front of him, and he will be rewarded or punished accordingly by Allah, the judge. On that day, each man alone will stand answerable for his own deeds. This is very important to ponder. Each man alone will stand and an answer for his own deeds. No other person will in any way be able to help or support him nor will anyone be present to intercede for him now there's an intercession from the prophet how is his intercession will be allowed the meaning of here is that intercession will also be allowed by the permission of allah allah gives permission the prophet will intercede and he will intercede but it's also permission of Allah. That's very important to understand. To elucidate this fact, a graphic picture of the tremendous cataclysm which will take place on that day is drawn. So this whole surah is just drawing our attention to the big event that's going to happen. And all of us singularly will face it. So the best thing for us to do is Recognize it, accept it, don't run away from it because you can't. And then be cautious in your life. Remember all those dua that you perform will make your scales heavy. And the biggest thing that will be heavy is your sincerity to Allah and His Prophet. Be pure, be sincere to Allah, and He will guide us, all of us. <coughs>